Another victim has her name back thanks to advanced DNA and genetic genealogy. Recently, the nonprofit DNA Doe Project solved the mystery of a 2004 Phoenix Jane Doe who was the victim of a hit and run. It means a tremendous amount to the career detective who spent years trying to solve this case. True Crime, True Crime Arizona's Brianna Whitney is here now with what ended up being a break in this case. You know, I'm always impressed by these, right? We hear about them, we know the technology is there, but it doesn't cease to amaze us, and I know mm. the public care. This case was unsolved for almost 20 years, and it took something unexpected to solve it. But it's not just this case. The DNA Doe Project has solved numerous unsolved crimes here in Phoenix alone, and it weighs on the heart of one man in particular. The saying goes, put a face with a name. But in forensics, sometimes detectives can spend hours looking at a victim's face with no idea who they are. You're born with a name, that's the one, first thing you get in your life, that should be the one thing you get to keep when you die. And these people are denied that. Over his decades with the Phoenix Police Department, now retired Detective Stuart Summershoe spent years on missing persons cases, a long list of Jane and John Doe's. One of those, this woman, a case Summershoe sent to the DNA Doe Project. She was formerly known as Broadway Street Phoenix Jane Doe. Karen Binder is an investigative genetic genealogist with the DNA Doe Project, a California-based nonprofit that has employees and volunteers around the world working on cases. Broadway Street Phoenix Doe was a difficult case. She was a victim of a hit and run accident and um, all those years uh, we didn't know who she was. We had ran her fingerprints, we had you know, had composites made um, with no leads coming in. We've been working on this case for years and what finally cracked it open is that Amelia's niece took a DNA test with Family Tree DNA. That one DNA test led to a match. Jane Doe was Amelia Munoz Laura, a 41-year-old from Mexico. Amelia became a statistic that still haunts Summershoe. The numbers are staggering. You have 40,000 unidentified bodies in the United States. Uh, Arizona has one of the highest in the nation. We have over 2,000 unidentified bodies here. Summershoe says Amelia's case is the sixth identification the DNA Doe Project has made with Phoenix PD alone, though they work on others in Arizona. He's so passionate about their purpose that he donates money to them personally as their work is paying off worldwide. They've identified over 100 John and Jane Doe's in the last five years. Amelia now has her name back. The hope? that Summer Shoe's other unidentified cases will soon find that same fate. You're kind of a caretaker for this person so you can get them back to their family. So it's very gratifying to finally say, hey, this is who this person was. These are the people who love them, and now they have an answer. Now, these DNA and genetic genealogy companies only have access to Family Tree DNA and GEDmatch as databases, but you can help. So let's say you did Ancestry.com or 23andMe. Those ones are super popular. You can upload your results for free to those two other databases, and you could potentially help solve an mm -hmm. unsolved crime, which is cool. Yeah, it's so interesting yeah. how that technology has come so far. So we're going to see more and more of these, right? Yeah, and I feel like we already have. I mean, I feel like I'm doing these cases a lot. We're looking at genetic genealogy, but it is crazy. The, the more DNA that's uploaded to these databases, the more cold cases you'll crack because everyone's kind of connected in some sort of way and sometimes they can solve with a fifth cousin or a sixth cousin. Mm. So yes, you assume the more people that do this, the more <laughs> cases that get solved. Do you think this will encourage people to do this or maybe discourage certain people who are like, I want to stay kind of in the shadows, I suppose? Sure, I, I think maybe both. Yeah. Um, at least on the positive front, you can choose to upload it. You mm. only have access to these two databases. So if you're somebody that wants to get your information but doesn't want to you don't have to kind of, there, you can op opt in if you want right right yeah. exactly but it is being used positively and I'm I think as we go on and the years go on I'd love to know in the next 10 years how the backlog of cold cases is looking will it be a lot lot less I think so and really quickly it's not the first time you've shown us what something like this means to a detective or a police yes. officer who worked on this <laughs> 20 years ago that it sticks with them in their minds it's really cool I was yeah. talking about this at 8 o'clock but to see him emotional about it you know we think about the officials and they're just doing the investigation Investigation, but to have that emotional crossover. Uh, he's really involved with the families. He's really involved with these cases. So yeah, it, it definitely is a, a big part of his heart. And yeah. I love that about him and about some of these detectives I work with. It's an important side of this story. Very Thanks, much Brianna. so, yeah.